I did live with you guys for two years, and hell, you've always been more of a man than him. What is up, you guys? It is Tyler. Welcome back, back, back to the Tyler Williams channel. Welcome to another NXT review. I just got off of the May 16, 2018 edition of NXT, and I'd say this is a pretty good show. Was it pretty good? Eh, I wouldn't say pretty good. Let's say it was a good show. It was a good show. It advanced a lot of storylines, and it had a really, really good main event that I'm going to get to soon. Okay, so we opened up the show with Johnny Gargano's theme hitting. Everyone thought it was going to be Johnny Gargano. I kind of kind of predicted. I'm like, ah, oh, Tommaso going to come out because he's, he's so great. Tommaso Ciampa comes out instead and people boo. Might I say, Tommaso Ciampa is hands down the best heel in the entire WWE right now. I don't know any man in WWE, the main roster or NXT, who gets the amount of boos that Tommaso Ciampa gets. He's always working a crowd and... I internally want to boo him, but I'm such a big fan of the villains of villains that it's very hard to boo Tommaso Ciampa. I do want to boo him, though, internally, but I'm like, I can't. I, I love this so much. I think one of the best touches about the Tommaso Ciampa character is the fact that he doesn't have a theme song. Like, when Tommaso comes out, it's just to radio silence, and all you hear is the crowd going, boo! I always... That, that's really cool. I don't know who the idea was it to not give him a theme song, but kudos to them. I I, uh, I thought that was a pretty cool, nice touch on it. Got some background noise going in the background. Hopefully it doesn't pick up. Um, so Tommaso comes out. I forgot what he was saying, but then out came Candice LeRae, the wife of Johnny Gargano. And I, immediately I was like, ooh. Because <laughs> it seems like whenever Johnny gets hurt, Candace is there, and Tommaso's there, and it's like, oh boy. You guys remember last week, Candace was all shook up about uh, Tommaso's actions and all this kind of stuff. She couldn't even focus on her match with um, Bianca Belair. I don't think that was the last thing, the week before. But you guys get what I mean. So she came out, she's talking about, oh, I'm, I, I, I don't know why you did it. Why would you do this? You, you lived with us for like two years. Johnny's best friend, you were a best man at our wedding. And she's like, you know what? I'm done crying about it. I'm done questioning it. You're going to get yours one day. We already know that Johnny is the better man because he beat you at NXT TakeOver. There's nothing to gain from this. You already lost. What do you want? She didn't ask that question because she just said she's done the question. But Tommaso has some... <laughs> he has a pretty good comeback. See, uh, as you guys saw in the beginning of the video, he said that um, Candace was more of a man than Johnny was, which I thought was just... Whew. Uh, he was about to say something else, but Candace slapped him. Listen, I know I might get some hate for this. <laughs> but I, in that moment, I kind of wanted Tommaso to hit her back. But I know, I know, I know. It's it's like, <gasps> you wanted a man to hit a female. How dare you? Now, listen, hear me out. How often? Actually, never. In the, in the, in the however long it's been since WWE with PG... Even before they went PG, I don't even remember the last time a man ever put a hands on a female on WWE television. And I felt like the way this feud's been building up for the past year, and you have Candice LeRae kind of incorporated into the storyline, I felt like the way to get it to the next level would have been to have Tommaso Ciampa, I don't know, pull her by the hair, shove her to the ground. I'm not saying he has to mount on top of her and just start, you know, punching her in her face or something, but... You know, something. Do something to her. She's been in matches with men before outside of WWE. I know she could take it. It's just a matter of if WWE's going to allow him to do that. And I have a good, I have a feeling that they won't. I just thought that that would have added a lot more to the future. It would have given more of a reason for Johnny to come out and kick his ass. Or him to come out next week kick his Because it's like, yeah, uh, Candace slapped him. Well, um... Johnny still didn't come out, and he probably won't come out the week after unless Tommaso does something to provoke him. So I think that, you know, laying his hands on his wife would actually provoke him. Would it not? It would provoke any other man. And if Johnny didn't come out then, then 
Tomas was pretty much right about his statement. But Candace slaps him. They both leave. At this moment, I really want it. I wrote down, I really wanted Tomas to hit her back, but he just walks her back. And then we get on to our first match. We got a jobber. I, I, I don't remember what her name was. I didn't even really take it down. Versus Lacey Evans. She came out with a new theme song. You know, they're really establishing that she's a heel now. Not a big fan of it. I, I don't know what it was about her last theme. Maybe that was Happy Go Lucky or something. I liked her last theme song. Like, I don't know why, but I just did. It, it had like a Cadet Kelly. Was that right? Cadet Kelly or Women's Mercenary type of feel. It, it had some feel to it that just made me gravitate to that theme song. This one, mm -mm. But I guess because she's a heel, we're not supposed to like her theme song. You know, the same way that you're not supposed to sing Shinsuke Nakamura's theme song, but you still have the occasional people who try to sing it, even though there's people going like, you know, speaking Japanese over it. Uh, Matt starts off. I, I mean, Lacey Evans is an, is an okay wrestler. She's she's not she's nothing special to look at. So, I mean, she's special to look at, but nothing special in the ring to look at. She did hit a really nice moon salt. In this match, in the middle rope or the top rope, it was one of the two. She had a really nice moon salt, not not like a picture perfect Charlotte moon salt, but she had a. It was a really nice landing she did on it. I won't give her credit there. I thought that was going to end the match, but she ended up finishing the match again with that right hand punch to the face. They named it the woman's right, which is clever. But a, you can you can make this as clever as 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 punny as hokey as you want the name of the move but it does not add out the fact that move as a finisher sucks it just does i'm listen i've said it last week the big show has a knockout punch for a finisher now i still think that a punch to the face isn't just really it really just doesn't sell as a finisher unless you're like big or imposing or you have a boxer type background or MMA type background. It somewhat kind of fits the Big Show because he's seven foot tall. And he has a giant fist, so it fits the Big Show. Lacey Evans, it doesn't. She's not some big jacked woman. She's not Nia Jax. She's not Karma. She's not freaking, I don't know, just other, t she's not a tall or bigger woman. She, she's like she's like an average size woman. I'm not saying she doesn't look like a strong woman because, you know, she used to be in the Marines, so that's definitely a strong woman right there. But you guys get what I'm saying. Like, I just cannot buy a punch to the face as a finisher it's from her. Like, honestly, I would have I would have much rather her had the moonsault as a finisher. I know a lot of people do the moonsault, especially Charlotte. I think that would have been the main issue there is Charlotte uses the moonsault more often than not. So having her use the moonsault... I don't know. Can you guys think of other finishers for her? To use? I mean, her her and Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair's finisher is kind of whack, too. I mean, I get that the alley-oop bomb, the reverse alley-oop, you know, it's a backwards power bomb. It looks cool, but when you think about it, how if it, first of all, the move takes like three seconds to set up, and then when the opponent falls, it's like... Then you then you look at it a few more times. It's like it's not really all that cool to look at. So Lacey Evans, Bianca Belair, they, they need some different finishers. Bianca Belair could definitely use that 450 because no one really uses it in WWE right now. But I think they're just kind of using that on special occasions. As far as uh, Lacey Evans, hopefully hopefully she finds something new soon. Kyrie Sane attacked Lacey Evans after the match. I guess that's setting a program for them at uh, Takeover Chicago too. Don't know if that's gonna be on the pre-show or not. But, uh, all right. We didn't get into a backstage interview with Alistair Black. Uh, one of the interviewers asked him about uh, Ricochet and uh, Velveteen Dream both wanting um, a future championship match with them. Alistair Black basically just said that he's unfazed by other men. He did give a little bit of an ode to his uh, few of Velveteen Dream, saying, despite us facing off in the past. So I'm like, hey, that's cool. That's cool, that's cool. So, um, that happened. Then we got to a backstage interview with Dakota Kai. I, I love me some Dakota Kai. Um, however, what I'm not too big a fan of is this, is this character, evo de evolution. Is it de evolution? Or dissension that she said? 
I don't know. It just seems like every time I see this woman on, she's always scared. Like, she, uh, she's getting an interview. Forgot what the question was. But she's like, yeah, uh, something about Shayna. And she's like, oh, they were asking about why she, like, kind of froze when Shayna came up there. She's like, I don't know why I did it. I, I just don't know. And then next thing you know, some woman comes into the frame, starts kind of yelling. And I'm like, oh, shit, here comes Shayna. <laughs> she's about to, probably about to go to the fetal position or some shit. But it wasn't Shayna. It was Nikki. So Nikki comes up to her. She looks like she's about to, like, break down in tears she has her arms up, like, not the fight, but she has her arms up, like, trying to cover her face. They're trying to block if Nick comes to I'm like, Dakota, what are you doing? I mean, I guess they can kind of go with this. She see, she's, it, it, it does make her seem sympathetic. I'm not going to lie, it does, but. <sighs> Bailey wouldn't do that, I'll tell you that much. Bailey wouldn't cower out the way that Dakota does, but I'm not going to make too many comparisons to Bailey there. There are different, there are two different entities after all. So Nick Cross comes into frame. She basically tells Dakota to woman up and fight Shayna and stop being a little... Well, okay, I guess I can't say that because they're both women. Stop being a little coward. Yeah, stop being a little coward. And fight Shayna. And then she kind of left laughing. She actually pulled out her own phone and started interviewing Dakota, which was uh, <laughs> pretty funny. Um, we didn't get to the match I was super excited for. Velveteen Dream versus Ricochet. I immediately texted my little sister, said, it's happening, and she's like, yay, and I'm like, because she kind of is in 10x, you know, so both men make their entrances, the match starts off, really promising start, you know, a lot of sequences from both men, two, three minutes in, I just hear loud boos, and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I don't know who's about to come out, but somebody's about to ruin this match, and what do you know, someone did ruin a match, Laura Sullivan comes out, Attacks Ricochet from behind, falls into uh, Velveteen Dream, which I guess makes a double disqualification on their terms. But in my terms, you know, Ricochet won the match because he was attacked first. But nonetheless, Lars Sullivan attacks both men, lays them out, throwing them across the ring and whatnot. They announce a no contest and it goes off there with Lars Sullivan standing tall over both men. And, you know, this sucked. I really wanted to see that match. But, hey... You know, takeover is probably a better better time to do it. I guess they're they're doing a two on one match next week with Lars Sullivan versus Ricochet and uh, Velveteen Dream. If they want to hold off that match until NXT Takeover Chicago, I will not be mad. Especially because Takeover shows is when all these NXT wrestlers pull out all the stops. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what? Hold off until Takeover Chicago. Go ahead, hold off. I want to wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. We then get on to the next match. Kona, not so fine in the ring, Reeves, versus Raul Mendoza. Raul Mendoza slept on the ring, slept on in the ring, not slept in the ring. He, he didn't come out and just, <laughs> good night, guys. He didn't sleep in the ring, no. Very much slept on in the ring. I feel like, uh, I feel like he has something. You know, it's kind of funny. This match is meant to showcase Kona, but in a way, I was more so intrigued by Raul than I was the man they're actually trying to showcase I think, well, well, ever since the Cruiserweight Classic, I just felt like Raul Mendoza could be something if they ever wanted to do something with him. In this match, he didn't do much because, of course, Kona took most of the offense. But I was just looking at him, observing him, like, yeah, he's got the look. He's got a bit of a theme song. He has the way to come out. I'm like, yeah, he could, be, he could be something, I'm sure. Kona Reeves, however, they're trying. They're trying. It's not really working yet, but this is week two, so let me not judge just yet. However, I will judge because I'm critical to an extent. Kona Reeves had a match. That was kind of it. Once again, he did not impress me at all. I will say this. The man comes out with the glasses and the jacket and he does the pose with the hair. And, you know, he looks like he could be some looks-wise, entrance-wise. He has it. When he gets into the ring... Not, yeah, it's like he's a he's a average, even slight. I would even say slightly below average wrestler in the ring. Honestly, like there's nothing impressive about him. Now, in a day and age where people do flips and shit all the time, and everyone is going around breaking fingers and doing joint manipulation, and 
it's very hard to get lost in a mix when it comes to talent on NXT when you don't have anything that speaks out about your moveset. So, in Kona Reeves' sense, he kind of has to find a bit of a, some more to do. He needs to find some other moves to do because that boots, that finisher, it's not working. It's not doing it. But hey, this is NXT. I'm not going to be like, oh, I hate Kona. Like, this is developmental. He's here to develop. Let's all not forget that. Kona Reeves won the match. Hopefully, he uh, gets better soon. Uh, he's not sick. I don't know why I said it like that. We then got a backstage interview with Ricochet. Kathy Kelly went backstage to try to get a word with one of the Ricochet or Velveteen Dreams. She got a word with Ricochet, who was trying to get into uh, William Regal's office. But then he was cut off by the Velveteen Dream, who put his hands on the doorknob. Like, what are you doing? And, Vel and Ricochet's like, what does it look like I'm doing? I'm going to go talk to Regal. And Velveteen Dream's like, well, I want to talk to Regal. And then he's like, and then Ricochet's like, okay. Let's go. And they both enter Regal's office. Seems like the setup to uh, gay porn. But hey, you know, <laughs> more more uh, interesting things have happened in NXT. So uh, I guess that's the way they set up the two-on-one match. That's cool. We didn't get to a heavy, heavy machinery promo. These two are always so fun to watch, especially when they're doing promos backstage. TM61. I put TM611. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> TM61 came into frame, uh, jaw jacking, heavy machinery. I guess they're full on heels now, which is sad because I really saw something in them as a babyface tag team. You know that they built up this whole return for TM61 coming into NXT Takeover Philadelphia. I was there live and I was very much behind TM61, and I was like, I want to see more of these guys. I want to see these guys win the tag team championships. They had something, and then the. Dusty Rhodes Statue Class came around and they lost in the first round. And I was like, the hell was the point of that? <laughs> that was the point of the whole buildup if you're just going to lose in the first round. You know what I mean? And I don't know if this was always the plan. But I I, I, I just I just wish they would have actually went with them as a babyface tag team. At least for a little while. Maybe have them capture the tag team championships. I'm not saying they should break up because every tag team breaks up nowadays. But, you know, somewhere down the line, turn heel. But... This seemed like kind of an early turn when they could have got some more out of them as a babyface tag team. Especially going into the next match where I really didn't even know what a babyface tag team was. But that doesn't stop it from being the best match on the show and one of the best matches of this month so far. So, we didn't get into the main event. The Undisputed Era of Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly... And Roderick Strong versus Pete Dunne and Player 1 and Player 2. Let me stop. Uh, Pete Dunne, Danny Birch, and Oni Lorcan. This was a really, really fun match to watch. I went in and I was like, last week, and I was like, I'm excited for this match. All six men are very talented. And I was like, oh, I can't wait. And this match delivered. Lots of hard-hitting moves. Lots of snaps and cracks and you know boots and all this type of stuff it's just a bunch of british wrestlers and in an american wrestler and adam cole but you guys get the point a bunch of british wrestlers going at it wait water strong and it was britain versus america <laughs> and everyone was hitting each other hard it was this really cool spot where um pete dunn only lorkin and danny birch had all the undisputed era locked in had their fingers and did a did a trifecta finger snap on them. I thought that was really cool. That was a move that made Marty Skrull smile, I'm sure. Um, there was this really, really cool hot tag. I'm going to have to include it in this video if I can. It, it might it might be too long, so I don't know. But really cool hot tag from um, Oni Lorkin. I don't know who tagged him in, but all I know is that he got into the ring. He laid out Pete Dunne. Then he didn't lay out his partner. He laid out <laughs> Adam Cole. He laid out Kyle O'Reilly. He was flying all over the place. He wasn't like doing some cruiserweight shit, but he was he was moving at a fast pace, guys. He was going like he he moved like a he was moving fast. He had a really cool flying flipping neckbreaker onto both um, Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong. Then he went and did a dive on Adam Cole. I was like, damn, this dude's moving fast as hell. And, he, and you know what? This reminded me a lot of um, those Cesaro hot tags. You guys remember back when um, Cesaro and Sheamus were a V-Face tag team? Cesaro used to do some really, really 
Really fun looking hot tags, and this reminded me a lot of that. Then again, only Lorcan always reminds me of Cesaro. Just the British version. So, you know, is Oni... I feel like Oni's not British. I feel like I'm confusing him with Danny Birch. But hey, you guys get the point. Oni Lorcan reminds me of Cesaro. Both men are equally talented, if not just overtly more talented than most of the roster, including the main roster. Nonetheless, uh, also a really cool spot when uh, Pete Dunne, Danny Burch, and Oni Lorcan had trifecta submissions locked in on the Undisputed Era. I believe someone knocked into the other and everyone kind of got out of it. There was hot tags from there on and throughout the match, it was just really cool. Everyone had a hot tag and just came in like a ball of fire. It was just so awesome. Danny Burch won the match with a wheelbarrow assisted DDT from Oni Lorcan onto Roderick Strong for the pin and Team Pete won the match. Really, really fun match. I recommend you guys go and watch this match. If you're not going to watch the show, watch this match. You'll enjoy it. And I usually don't always recommend matches on a single show, but I would definitely recommend this one. So yeah, that was a that was a pretty nice episode of NXT. I would definitely say you guys should watch it. Not go out of your way to watch it. I would go out of your way to watch the match, but definitely uh, give this episode a look if you have time. And yeah, that was my review of NXT. Thank you all for watching this review. As always, I love you guys, and I will talk to you all later. Peace out.